it is very easy when things are hard for us to turn inward, to focus on ourselves. Maybe we're dealing with a health problem and we just focus on ourselves. Maybe we're going through problems in our family and we focus in on ourselves. Maybe it's our job. Maybe it's the world around us. Maybe the world around us is pressing us, squeezing us even tighter. And we turn in and focus on ourselves. And when we do it, we're focusing on ourselves, when we're turning in on ourselves like this, we have a tendency to neglect others. And Peter is writing to a group of people, a group of churches, believers, scattered throughout areas that we would know as modern-day Turkey. And uh, these believers are focusing, they're struggling to focus on others because they are going through difficulties. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher. We're looking at the filling ministry of the Spirit, and we're doing kind of a survey through the New Testament letters to notice that almost all of these other letters have something in there that talk about the body of Christ and the importance of being connected with others in the body of Christ and of serving and loving others in the body of Christ. And all of that requires the ministry of the Spirit. All of that requires the filling of the Spirit. The filling of the Spirit. Even though it doesn't use the terminology filling, it is talking about the Spirit filling us with things we need. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, as he's writing to these people, he says that, let's go back up to the beginning of verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice, that is, they're looking out to Christ's coming back for us, even though now for a little while, notice he says, trying to put it in perspective, it's a little while, in, in, in comparison to eternity, which is, which is vast, unending, we're looking at this little sliver of time in which we live. So for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed or put to grief by various trials so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold which perishes, though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is when he's unveiled to us. Now the word that's translated trials up here is the word temptation. Because as these problems are coming from the outside, it's more than just a trial. It is something that Satan, our enemy, is using to tempt us. Tempt us to not operate within God's will. Tempt us to operate contrary to God's will. But those temptations can, if we have our attitude adjusted properly, James, is, James tells us the same thing, they can become proof or now, this would be a test look, looking for that which is good. So, both of these are, are words about testing. Pyrazo, uh, in this case, pyros, pyrasmos, the, the noun. Both of them are referring to testing and then dokimos here. And uh, both of them are referring to a test. But the first, a pyrazo, a test looking for that which is negative. You're looking for failure. You're trying to elicit failure. Whereas the second one, Dakimas, is looking for success, like a saying, a piece of ore to find out how much valuable material is in that ore. And so in both of these here, you're looking at a test, but the first one, Satan, or this world system and the, the pressures it puts on us, is trying to get us to act out of God's will. That would be negative. But if we respond properly to him, it can become a proof. It can be something that demonstrates a reality. So keeping that in mind, as he's going through and he's going to be talking about a lot of things in 1 Peter, and we're just doing a very quick survey, in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 17, he charges these believers, he says, honor all. You ought to show honor to all. But then he says, and all I would take to be all people. So the New American Standard is added all people, but it's just in the Greek, it's just all. But then he says, love, there's our word agape, that requires us to be filled by the Spirit so that we can have this love. Don't get me wrong, as I've said before, unsaved people have love. 
They ha- they can have a quality of love, but it's not the kind of love that God wants. It's not the kind of love that genuinely self-sacrifices for others. And so he says, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So fear God but uh, and honor the king. But it's the love for the brotherhood. He's reminding them again that even in the midst of this difficulty, even in the midst of the hardships and things that they're going through, it is still appropriate for them to love the brotherhood. Now, we can just make a blanket statement like that. But if we go over to 1 Peter chapter 4, he's going to repeat this, but he's going to add a couple little details in here. And in verse 8, he says, on top of all this or before all of these things, uh, it says, have fervency or, or have in fervency your love for now, they translate it one another, but it's it, this is a reflexive pronoun. But it's looking. There's a reason for he's doing this because you're looking at this, this larger group of people on the outside that are causing problems. And then you're looking at this group of believers and tightly together then in this group, distinct from those that are on the outside, he's trying to say, here, within yourselves. So this is a tight one a tight oneness this is not a reciprocal pronoun although it seems like it has that sense here but it's because he's looking at the group as closely together that he uses this this pronoun that we would normally think is something that you do to yourself but it's plural looking at this group so he says he says have have in fervency your love or have your love in fervency fervency meaning that that which that which is uh, is uh, stretching itself out, that which is really burning in, in what it's trying to do. And it says, because love covers a multitude of sins. Now, there's two different ways of understanding that. Love can cover up their sins and just ignore their sins or can cover them by encouraging other believers uh, to do the right thing and therefore prevents sins from transpiring. Either way, your whatever 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 direction you end up going, love is necessary to help keep all of us on track. And then he goes on in verse nine. And again, when you tend to look inward, not looking outward, hospitality, showing hospitality. And now he says to one another. And I believe the reason now he switches from this reflexive pronoun to this um, reciprocal pronoun is because now it's you as an individual inviting others to share with, to come over and share with you. And so now, now we definitely have a more of a reciprocal sense than we had up here when we were looking at this really tight knit group. And he says, doing so without grumbling. In other words, why do I have to have them over to my house? Why do I have to feed them food? No. He says, he just told them back up in the first part that they had to have, look at themselves as this group and have in love. This, this up here really is very body-oriented. And so he says, you ought to have this, this hospitality for one another. And then in verse 10, he says, as each one has received a, we have this word special gift. It's simply a, a thing of grace, a result of grace. And it does re- refer to a gift. Every one of us, and we've been over this in our studies before, every one of us has received a spiritual gift, an ability to serve others. And he says, we need to, again, employ it in serving, in this word, serving, diacon, diaconia, we're, we're using it. He says, uh, as we're serving, and we have this uh, word, one another here, it again comes back to this, this um, pronoun, uh, haotos, this reflexive pronoun that looks at all of us as, as a group. And the reason for that is, is you're not ministering your spiritual gift to those on the outside. This is something that's closely done here within the group. And so he's kind of looking at, it as the last verse we looked at over there in chapter 2, yes, you honor all and you fear God and you, and you are, are loyal to you, do what you're supposed to with regard to the king, but it's the love you have. You love, have love for the brothers alone. And here's some good examples. Has to do with showing hospitality. Has to do with using your spiritual gift as good stewards of God's manifold grace. And then he's going to give two examples. The gifts can be broken down into two categories. There's gifts that open their mouths and speak. 
So there's, an, there's a several gifts that are speaking gifts that we are ministered to by listening to them speak. And then there are gifts that serve. Now, all of them serve in one sense, but there are gifts that are ministering to maybe our physical health, maybe ministering to our material needs, maybe ministering um, to, uh, what's the other word I was going to look for? Just having, having us as encouraged well, that would be a speaking gift. I'm sorry. But there is a, a just ten, tending to needs. Maybe maybe we need help with some cooking or cleaning or something like that. So there are speaking gifts and serving gifts, but it doesn't make any difference. What, whichever gift it is, we should be serving those gifts. God didn't give us those gifts for us just to sit there and focus just on me. It's to focus on us as a group. So remember this, when you're going through a hard time, maybe you're going through one of these things as we introduced, maybe you're going through a health problem, a family problem, a job problem. Maybe life's just hard wherever you are from the outside, from other pressure. It is still appropriate to have love. It's still appropriate to be hospitable to the brothers. It is still appropriate for you to be using your gift, thinking about others and using your gift, but always then, focusing on us as this group and needing the filling of the Spirit to have this love so that we can serve together. Because we want to be serving together. We want to be functioning like this. And we need the Spirit to fill us to make all of this possible so that we not only are having a good day, but others in the body of Christ with whom we know, with whom we spend time, uh, can also have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.